to my power below everybody. It's a general truism that there are more films set in Wales than you would first realise, but they're not always signposted, so you have to go looking for yourself sometimes. And that is why Wales in the Movies is here, folks, to go looking in places most channels won't, and to shine a light on the often murky and obscure world of Welsh movies. Countries, like individuals, often develop their own sets of habits. You could call this culture. But what's sure is that how a country or a person presents themselves will often define how they're perceived by the world outside. Since the beginning of cinema, the type of projection that has seen Wales most prolific has been the horror film. This is so prevalent that within the genre, Welsh films have managed to develop their own sets of habits and customs. This is evident not just in some of the repeated tropes and motifs in the films themselves, but also in the naming of Welsh horror movies. So, light yourself a candle, oil up that rusty back door, and let's look at a Welsh movie horror habit. <laughs> James Whale's film from 1932 cannot really be classed as a horror, but more of a comedy drama. On their way to Shrewsbury, three English travellers become lost in a terrible storm in the desolate Welsh countryside. They seek refuge in the house of the Fem family, who are a bunch of oddballs served by a mute alcoholic butler played by Boris Karloff. <laughs> Even Welsh ought not to sound like that. The film also features Gloria Stewart, who will be known to my generation as Old Rose from Titanic. The print of this film was nearly lost to us, but was saved before being remade in the 1950s, and it's a good job too, and it's possibly the beginning of some of the motifs of Welsh horror films that still carry through today in 2017. Now this effort from 2016 was executively produced by a man called Neil Marshall, who's very well known for films such as Dog Soldiers and The Descent. But reading online, it seems to have been a big disappointment to some reviewers, but very much appreciated by others. A good thing to do would be to find a copy and judge for yourself. I am here to point you towards movies set in Wales, which you may not have seen. And what I appreciate greatly about the words from the director of this film, Ed Evers Swindell, is that he explicitly set the movie in Wales because he recognised that the country is used a lot by movie crews who normally set their films somewhere else. It's featuring such Welsh performers as Shewan Morris and Gareth David Lloyd, known for TV's Torchwood. I'll be up front with you guys, I haven't seen A Dark Signal. But I must say, I like the look of the trailer and I think I may well enjoy it despite its mixed reviews from horror fans. And I'll explain why now, in a minute. Right, so back to the point just now about enjoying horror films that get dissed by the community. I think a good example of this is The Dark, a generally underrated movie from 2005 with Sean Bean and Maria Bello. What I'm trying to say is, folks, if, like me, you're a total pussy for horror films and get scared really easily, then you might enjoy horrors that flop with critics. To give you some context for my own scare threshold, in 1993, age 14, I had to leave the cinema during the T-Rex Jeep scene from Jurassic Park. So The Dark may not be the most scary film out there for horror aficionados, but it's got a high production value, it's well directed and acted, and a tale which I find genuinely creepy and really enjoy despite it being met with very average reviews and a failure to gain any kind of notoriety or status with fans of the genre. It also touches on some elements of Wales mythology, which is more or less unheard of for an international feature film. Diane. Wales! This disgraceful piece of shit from 1997 was directed by Julian Richards and tells the story of Fraser Truick, played by classically trained Shakespearean thespian 
Craig Fairbrass of Cliffhanger and EastEnders fame. Fraser is a Welsh-born Cockney journalist on the trail of a murdered brother of his new colleague Rachel. In an art form whose scripts have often been quite mischievous in their representations of Wales and particularly its language, this one absolutely takes the piss. Depicting Welsh nationalism as a kind of devil-worshipping pagan cult intent on restoring Welsh industrial strength through blood sacrifice. Nice. After a very atmospheric opening credit sequence, Julian Richards' film takes its story into numerously boring grey and domestic interiors and considering its childish and self-loathing attempts to tell a crowd-pleasing British story, it's a film I'm kind of glad has disappeared off the radar. But here I am pointing you in its direction, so give Darklands a try, even if only to make yourself angry. Well, don't get me wrong, it's nothing personal. It's I'm just not into all that back to your roots shit. You know, Keller's a nationalist. If he had his way, we'd all be dressed as Arabs, playing arts and speaking gobbledygook. <laughs> Finally, A Dark Song is an Irish film from 2017 directed by Liam Gavin, who describes himself as an Irish and Welsh filmmaker. Sweet! The story follows Sophia, who wants to contact the spirit of her dead son, so rents out an isolated Welsh house and an occultist played by Steve Oram. Confession time dudes, I haven't seen this one either, but who gives a seven pig's heart about my opinion anyway? What you should know is that A Dark Song has been lauded by fans and critics alike, and as there seems no real reason as far as I can see to set the film in Wales, let's be grateful to the crew for putting the story here. Dion Dioch. Before we sign off, an honourable mention must go to House of the Long Shadows from 1983, which is so insulting to Wales that it's going to get the full angry treatment with its own video here on Wales in the Movies in the future. <laughs> Guess that isn't the way you pronounce it. Oh, I shouldn't worry. They're all like that around here. Hate the English. It's the first time I've ever been accused of being English. You'll find the Welsh are terribly nationalistic, especially the older ones. I'll remember that. Wear a leak or something to show I'm a friend. And that's it. This ain't the first or the last list of Welsh patterns we'll be exploring here on Wales in the Movies Cumberly Views. All of the movies mentioned here today will be reviewed in full on the channel soon. And if you like the video, do yourself and do Wales a favour. Help me prove we're not all devil worshippers by checking out a previous video or subscribing to the channel. Every new viewer helps us shine a bigger light on the Welsh darkness. Diolch. <laughs>